Welcome back to another episode of Consciously Clueless, the podcast that teaches you how to live a healthier lifestyle that makes you and the planet happier. The world is changing quickly. Sometimes it feels like you can't keep up. I hear you. You want to make the world a better place. You care, but you don't know where to start. You know taking care of yourself is important, but how? I get it. I have a history of diving into a new endeavor, seeking perfection, and quickly feeling like I failed. Whether it was going vegan or learning how to recycle more, I wish I had guidance to keep me on track and not overwhelmed. I can't lie, the world needs your help. But it doesn't need you to be perfect. This podcast is here to help. Here we go. Today on the podcast, I talk to Vindivi founder and CEO and Who's Judging podcast host, Connor Dickey. So, Connor, I'm going to put you on the spot. If you had to put yourself on a spectrum from clueless to conscious, the title of the podcast, where are you right now in this moment? Probably towards the middle. I'd say closer to clueless, though, to be honest. Maybe we'll get further today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see what we can do here in the next like 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, big boost. <laughs> All right. Well, we have connected and been connected for a while and have actually worked on a project together. It's, it's so cool yes. how the internet can be a wild place, but it can also be a very cool place <laughs> to connect with vegans and environmentalists and the like. So tell me a little bit about what you do and your organization. Yeah, so we started Vindivi last year. So far, the original goal was for the podcast for a blog and then like a YouTube channel for like shorter videos and shorter topics than a podcast. And so we had it going pretty far until the other two backed out. So we're just kind of going through. So I've re kind of vamped the blog website for where I'm the author instead of the partner. And then YouTube, I have a few videos recorded with the other partner and then I'll just have to start making shorter ones, which shouldn't be hard because some topics just, you can't go on for 45 minutes sometimes. So or it's easier, people receive it better, it's shorter. Totally, uh, totally. Yeah, and so I'm hopefully going to get that up by the end of the year. The blog should be soon because I think I'm just kind of repurpose some of the podcast episodes into blogs as well, and that's an easier start in. And then from there, I think we're going to, we have merch up, and then I think products, I've collected a lot of plastic, so I'm going to try to make beads and stuff out of that for jewelry and stuff. And so... I mean, it's really more mission driven. So like we have water bottles and stuff reusable and I keep them pretty close to cost because I want people to buy them too. So all of the things you're doing are because of a commitment to the earth and to the animals, correct? Yes, definitely. Um, trying to do everything I can more for the animals, earth, secondary, but very important as well. And so I think, especially nowadays with the internet, as you mentioned, media is a very important and very impactful way to do it. And it's also not as, you know, capital intensive. And so you can get it started there. Hopefully we build off of that. Mm -hmm. So where did your vegan journey begin? Because to be sitting here and on a podcast and creating this <sighs> organization that, that took a starting place. So where was that for you? Right. Um, I've always thought of myself as a huge animal lover. And so I think it was around 2013-ish or 2014. It was when it really started hitting. Like I couldn't separate the meal from the animal. Mm -hmm. And so that was getting really hard. And I started following some more like the vegan pages. And that helped a lot and gave me more information. And just kind of, you know, a lot of them are very kind of sad or impactful videos and stuff they post. So that's hard. And so I went vegetarian first because I live with my I lived with my family at that time. And so you know, it's hard to go straight in. And also I didn't really know how to tell them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I went vegetarian for almost a year, <clears throat> which is also hard right in the middle of high school, you know, pressure, normal oh, wow. things. Yeah. And so then it, we went to Chicago, had a nice, you know, pizza with the family. And then when we got back around June of the next year, I went vegan. And ever since, other than a few mistakes at the beginning, because you realize there are a lot more things than you think you can eat. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's milk powder <laughs> in the most outrageous of places. Yes, Funyuns. Funyuns killed me. I loved Funyuns. So we got the like Costco box that had Doritos and Lay's and things. And so I knew which ones I couldn't have, Yeah, I thought. And then I ate all the Funyuns and then I checked and I was like, whey powder? 
you know, after you eat the whole box of them. <laughs> yep. 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 No, totally have been there. You hear that bunions? You're screwing up lives. Right. See, but Oreos surprise on the good side. A true surprise on the good side <laughs> and a go-to of mine. I will yes. admit <laughs> probably too much of my food yeah. pyri- pyramid, but <laughs> you know, we, we try our best. Yes, we do our best. So I think it is really fascinating to think about having awareness. Maybe I'm just thinking of my own experience, but going vegan as a high schooler and and making yeah. that decision young, not only with, you know, still living with your family, but it's also just a time where, I don't know, you're questioning everything and like nothing makes sense. Right. And what is the world, right? So how was that yes. as a, a teenager to make that decision? What did your friends and family think? It's a little interesting. Yeah. Thankfully, my family was super supportive from the beginning. And, you know, my mom, you know, the wearing one looked into it a lot more, wanted to make sure that the proteins and the vitamins and everything was there. So that's helpful because I think that's a mistake or overlooked sometimes when people go vegan is they don't really know how to eat vegan. They don't know how to replace the vitamins and stuff. And so sometimes they fall back. So that helped. Friends have been better than you would think, I guess. You know, you always get the jokes every once in a while, but... As long as they're friends, you know, it's not bad intentions. So that's good. The only thing that got me was, I think in the beginning, the first few years, I think my best friend told more people I was vegan than I told I was vegan. <laughs> so it's like, come on, man. Oh, Just why like, is that so classic? Oh, my friend's vegan. He can't have that. And you're like, I yeah, didn't right. but didn't bring that up. But it's like even worse. It's not even like restaurants sometimes. It's just like we hang out with someone new and they're like, he's vegan. I'm like, what does this have to do with anything? Oh, wow. Like it's like you should just like wear a, a tag with it on there. Right. Yeah, I was the I was the trophy. I was the vegan friend. I think maybe it may even felt cool or special. Yes. <laughs> so during high school, definitely an interesting time because especially a lot of people aren't really thoughtful. They don't really care how you feel sometimes. So I think one of the biggest things I did was senior year we had to do it like a persuasive speech and one of the topics was eating less meat and I was like you know what fuck it like so that was when I was just like you know we're gonna do it and so I did it and you know people don't care enough but I think I knew my class well class well enough that they didn't like make fun of me for it but yeah some of the you know lines don't really hit the same for them (laughs) you know like comparing the dog to the pig Right. That cognitive dissonance is strong, man. Right. Yeah. Because I think what I used was like, if the pig was your dog, would you eat it? Or like, you know, that, like the bacon and dog. And, you know, you know, they're always like, yeah, I totally would. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) That's disturbing. Yeah. But it was fun overall. It was a very easy speech to write. So that was good. What a sensibility to come out of high school with. I'm curious too, as you know, presenting male in this world and in the (laughs) veganism world, toxic masculinity and all of that is so interesting to me. And the intersection with veganism can sometimes be wild. Have you you had any of those experiences? Um, I don't think I've run into any yet where it's like, oh, you don't eat meat. You're not a man. You know, Mm -hmm. sometimes that's one of like the few jokes that throw from my friends, which is fine because it's just funny. You know, they know bad intentions. But from there, you know, I think that happens a lot more on the internet because I think people just, well, I know people just don't care on the internet and they say things they wouldn't really tell you in real life for it. Um, And there's probably also a bit of a a generation shift too, right? Um, Oh yeah, like the older generation. Just in general, the the idea of one, veganism and two, toxic masculinity. Two are like, we're not there, but we've moved along on those two trains in society. I think we're shifting it. Yeah. So like my parents totally understand. I think the older generation, you know, they've just been doing it longer. So it's more of their norm. Totally. But you know, my parents, when I'm home, they'll eat vegan. So a lot of the times it's vegan. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my dad can't get over the cheese. So he just shreds the cheese over the vegan meal, but that's a lot closer. A lot closer. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have any other success stories in your life where people that were like, oh my gosh, you're my, you're the reason you're the reason, bro. (laughs) You know, I was very close. My cousin who lives down in San Diego as well. I think he was vegetarian for over a year, but 
he relapsed. But, you know, still Relapse. closer. He's closer. He still eats a lot less than he would. He always has like vegan products over when I come over and stuff. So very good progress. Still proud of him. Yeah, but absolutely. So I had a, a great conversation with a guest the other day. They just made this point about how when you live in that way where it's like all or nothing, you're just not allowing space for anyone to try, right? Like no one right. wants to try if there's no allowance of failure. Oh, yeah. And I didn't, it's so funny because I needed that. But then as soon as I kind of was learning all about this, I forgot that. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's a, it's an important thing to stick in your mind when you're frustrated, when your friends that are like, oh, I don't feel good. And you're like, I know what could help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't always be the hero. That was interesting because I was thinking about bringing up, you wrote the, the angry vegan phase for the guide. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically what you were just talking about. I don't know if you wanted to just talk a little about how you kind of ways you think helped that or what, what you did to get through that. Sure. Absolutely. Before we get there, should we talk mm -hmm. about the guide? Sure. Have we done that yeah. yet? I think we mentioned it. We mentioned it. We okay, didn't go so through anything. I'll let you take the, the helm on that one and I'll go into my angry vegan phase. <laughs> so yeah, we put together the vegan guide. It's called Simplify Your Vegan Journey. We just wanted to put together a free guide. There's no... You don't have to pay, nothing like that. I don't even, there's not even going to be ads on it. The only thing I did was put two placements in for our first two interviews. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of make it easier for people looking to go vegan, people that are vegan and need help, or people kind of making the transition. And so we put the reason, main reasons for it, like for the animals, for the environment, for humanity. We put a lot of different things in, like yours, the vegan, angry vegan phase. We put Q and A's that I asked around for. We have different tips for cutting out the foods, the meat, and then the eggs and dairy, I think, separate section, and then cutting out even the non-food items, which is mm -hmm. harder to do, especially because you might already have some big items like a car with leather seats that you can't just kind of get rid of overnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it's just kind of letting them know there in that section too that, that that's fine. Like if you have a leather seated car, you're still vegan. Just, you know, next time you buy a car, you don't buy one with leather seats preferably. Yeah, which totally harkens back to that idea, right, of like, if we don't allow for this to be like a spectrum and for people to explore it and to do what they can, then everyone's going to be like, well, fuck you. <laughs> I can't buy <laughs> oh, a new car sure. tomorrow. <laughs> like, right. And I think the other huge one is maybe if they're playing sports, like baseball is very mm. leather heavy or especially medications, like a lot of medications are animal tested and you can't go around that because yep. it's a required, even for the companies it's required and it's not like there's just an option for you to be like, you know, I'm going to stop taking my meds. It's probably mm -hmm. not the best thing to do. <laughs> right. So we put that in there. We put, I put five, five or so, five or six of my favorite recipes in there, both They're good. dinner and dessert. So mm -hmm. those are good. So yeah, just basically a guide that could help them out free. We put a summarized version in, in case they don't want to read through 30 pages. <laughs> <laughs> But of course, you have to read the full version to get all the pictures. You know, that's the bonus for reading through the other one. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It is a really great guide. And I appreciate that you were so committed to like really making it expansive and really being like, if this thing is going to go out, it's going to be as much information as we can. And not like, I mean, 30 pages, but not in an overwhelming way, even, but just as much as like, let's touch on all the things that come up, you know, like right. let's, let's have seeds planted for all those things that might come up so they can hearken back to it. Of course. Yes. And so, I mean, it sounds like a lot when you say 30 pages and that is a lot, but it also comes down to like, there's so many different things that like most sections are only maybe a page and a page and a half or a page and a half, which is not a whole lot. Right. Um, and the good thing is it is an interactive table of content. So you don't have to scroll through 30 pages. You can click where you want to go. And, you know, maybe you don't feel like reading for the animals today and you just want to read for the environment, you know? Yeah, People totally. aren't going to read through it all the time. So, And that actually helpful. might be like a good tip if you are, if I'm a believer in doing what you can. And sometimes, you know, uh -huh. I don't know about you, but like I'll get really into something and then... I'm really into it and learning all about it and blah, 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 go all the way in. And sometimes that's good, but sometimes that can get really overwhelming. Like if this is oh, all yeah. new information to you, 
maybe you don't need to read 30 pages and be worried that you're right. like a terrible person because you're not. But sometimes when you learn new things and how ways you could be better, the first kind of instinct is to be like, oh, I'm shitty. I should have oh, been yeah. doing this. And so that is a good tip almost just like even if whether it's that guide or something else in this kind of realm, you don't have right. to do it all at once. Right. Sections at a time, you know, let mm -hmm. yourself process it. Um, but yeah, just uh, it's a whole lot, a lot of information, then a lot of tips that we could provide big questions. I think you saw the mis there's a misconception section that has a few in there. So, yeah. you know, hopefully it helps. The goal here is just to make, if we make one person vegan and they make one person vegan, it's a domino, you know? It's a really great resource for consciously clueless listeners. It'll be available to download when you're listening to this. It's going to be really exciting because I think people really are interested in veganism in general. Like when I do polls mm -hmm. on my stories, there is a lot of interest, but there's also just a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of fear because there are some shitty vegan accounts that make you feel yeah. terrible. Let's be honest. Yes. Judgment is a hard part. I don't. Yes. I, maybe some people get stuck in that angry phase permanently. And mm. I think some do. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's a the good way reason. to put it. Yeah. And so that's why I wanted to start who's judging the podcast too, is because, I mean, I just want to put out there that we don't all judge. It's like, who's judging? Just come learn. We're not here to judge you. And you know, Hopefully that helps out. As you were saying, a lot of people are scared of judgment because they have been judged. Mm -hmm. That was one of the other reasons I created this podcast is I got, I went vegan and then I got in, interested in environmentalism. And so I kind of dove into like sustainability and everything. And I thought that I had to keep all my trash in a jar for the year <laughs> or whatever else. I was uh -huh. like, this is I don't know. I guess what I'm finding isn't accessible. So I was like, maybe I'll just start a podcast and have conversations about it that feel a little bit less like judgment. <laughs> right? So I'm no, glad we connected. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have the whole consciousness aspect on yours that I was like, you know what? I think the guide could use that. You know, I don't know anything about it. I'm consciously clueless. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really, I really appreciated it because I, I loved the idea and I loved of, of, you asking for me to bring that perspective, which going right. back to that kind of like, that was the conversation about the angry vegan phase, right? Is <laughs> yes. to, to, to go back to your question, <laughs> I, I've talked about this at nauseum on my podcast and listeners are rolling their eyes at this point, <laughs> but there often is, it's just, it's, it's a fact I call it what you want, but there's some sort of reckoning you do mm -hmm. when you learn a really new big thing, like I remember going to college and learning some things that my privilege allowed me to ignore for a really long time. And then you just, mm. I'm like, well, I'm pissed. Like I'm pissed that these <laughs> sexual assault numbers are so high. I'm pissed that X, Y, Z, right? So there's this reckoning right. that happens when you learn things you become passionate about. So I don't think it's a bad thing, but if you get- but you have to get through it. <laughs> yeah, if you get stuck in just being really pissed off, you're going to be unhealthy and you're not going to be very effective. Right. Yeah, sounds right. <laughs> yeah, and again, it's not a judgment because I think that's a natural mm -hmm. response to learning big things about the world. It's just yeah. that's where for me, the mindfulness piece comes in. Like, am I checking in with my mental health and my own mindfulness practices? So I'm not stuck in that and I can check myself a little quicker. Right. I think it's also just really hard when you are super passionate about something and like the people around you don't seem to care at all. And I think that's mm. an aspect too. But as you're saying, it's like being in that phase is not going to get them to care about it anymore. Right. So you're going to push them further. Hey there, it's me. If you're digging this conversation so far around conscious living in this episode and you're feeling inspired to make change, that's literally why I'm here. If you want sustainable ways to be sustainable, you hear eco-friendly or green and wonder if you're doing it right. You want to make your diet more earth-friendly by going vegan. You want to live a more connected life, but you're not even sure what that means. No judgment. It is possible to feel excited about making changes to make a difference in the world every single day with your choices, to go vegan and stay vegan without feeling like you're missing anything, or to learn how to make good choices for the planet without feeling stressed. I help folks who are ready to make changes in their life that support their health and the world around them through supportive coaching, practical education, and steps that make you enjoy the process. 
If that's you, email me at consciouslycarly at gmail.com and let's chat. Back to the episode. So how do you handle that situation? Like if you have people around you that are just not, not feeling the vibe. (laughs) I think I have a few methods. The first one that I use a lot is I just don't bring up vegan topics a lot around people. Mm. You know, they know I'm vegan. I know they know I'm vegan. You know, that's it. So like, you know, one of the events I went to recently with one of my friends who we've been to quite together a lot because he had his wedding. So, you know, we had the baby shower, everything Mm, for that. And so they started asking me questions when we were sitting at the tables. And so like, I'm totally fine answering, but I just, typically I'm not the one to bring it up. So like, if they ask, I'll go in or, you know, I just try to think about how I was before kind of, Yeah. you know, I think that's a way to do it. I also just kind of read the room. Like you can tell if someone's asking and wants to know more, if they're asking kind of just to, you know, make fun of you, like hear it and be like, ah, I don't care. You know, yeah, I think they're it's like setting you tell. up to be a punchline. Yeah, I think it's easy to tell. So when they're genuinely curious, I, I answer their questions. And so, oh, yeah, go. Oh, yeah. I was just gonna say, I think it, it was actually helpful because one of the previous episodes was on like, do animals have feelings and different things like that. And that was one of the questions that they asked me is like, do like, did I feel that animals like our dogs and everything had the same feelings like towards us that we had towards them? And so I've made an episode of it. I was like, that's a pretty good topic, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So I went into that with different animals, dogs, pigs, cows, because I don't think people know how intelligent animals are. That's something I say all the time when like (laughs) I'm with a friend or someone's like, oh, look at this pig video. I'm like, they're, you know, smart they are. (laughs) But it's like, nobody ever teaches you that. Isn't it wild how like systematic it is. Right. To mm-hmm. learn these certain things. Where did you grow up? Can I ask? Uh, San Diego. It is San Diego. I, I mean, I'm just throwing this out there. You Please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm in Minnesota in the Midwest, like in the woods, an hour from Canada. So like uh-huh. veganism is a different conversation than it is in San Diego. Most likely, yeah. Right? Like that's a safe assumption. Uh, I would say uh, so. So it's so interesting to think about like that kind of that kind of sensibility of even having the language at an earlier age to Uh know what that is or anything like that. It's so interesting. Yeah. The sociologist in me from (laughs) way, way back when is like, Oh, that would be so interesting to run numbers regionally on the age people become vegan. But I bet there's, I bet there's something there too. Yeah. I would assume California, Southern California probably would have some pretty young numbers there. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I think we're more open for those kind of conversations here. I would think a lot of people would even say they support the cause, but like wouldn't go vegan themselves. Totally. Which is one of the frustrating things, but you know, at least they're willing to listen to it and hear about it. So it's a step. So if someone says to you, wow, dude, you seem to really be passionate about this vegan thing, like what's your goal here? What do you, what do you, what do you want to do? Why do you care so much? Man, yeah. What's your, think, what's your elevator <laughs> speech? You know, I think what I've always said is I just want to make one person vegan. Like if I make one person vegan because of this thing, that's more than I would have if I didn't start this. Mm. So obviously, you know, I want a hundred thousand people to go vegan because of <laughs> this, but if I make one, that's still a bigger impact than if I didn't do it. Yeah. So that's what I'd probably say. Make one person vegan. Then if they become passionate about it, go there. But also even people like my coworkers and stuff. I have multiple coworkers that listen to like every episode that comes out. So it still informs them and maybe like loosens their, you know, their feelings about it. But yeah. Yes, totally. I think that's a really good way to see it. Like loosens, it like loosens the grips of the societal norms that we were taught in that right. area. Right. Where you're like, well, I trust Connor. I trust Carly, you know, like the, your friends that listen, cause right. they're like, I don't know. She's not a total asshole. I think she probably has something good to say about this. Someone stopped me in my local co-op the other day to tell me that they're trying really hard, not totally there, but trying to go vegan because of the podcast. And like you, you said, go. it was just like, shit, man, people are listening. It's easy to forget. Right. It's a good feeling, especially when it's people, you know, not just people from the internet. Mm-hmm. Because like you said, they, I think they listen with a different intent. Like you're like, oh, that's, they're like, oh, that's Connor. And then they listen a lot more intensely than someone who's just, you know, drifting by on the internet. 
Totally. Totally. So you, on the podcast, you who's judging, you've had some really fun guests and really like cool conversations, like the one you were talking about, the yeah. one of the more recent episodes. What are what is like one or two things that have just like really surprised you or that some of the craziest things you've learned? You know, some of the fun ones we we got on a guy from India who makes his own Indian vegan food and he has a series, he does it on Instagram, Herbivorian. And that was really cool because we we had a whole bunch of jokes where it's like he makes super spicy food. But I think that's also kind of cool when you see like not just people making vegan food, but like vegan food from like their culture and sharing yeah. it. And it was also just interesting because I guess I didn't realize that like the two sides, I think it's West India, whatever the two mm -hmm. in India is essentially are like totally different. Because I always thought of India as like they don't eat cow, but I guess mm -hmm. that's only like one part of India. Yeah, our our classic, I mean, painting a broad brush here, but our classic yes. education in this fine country does not do us <laughs> well for knowing knowledge of many other peoples. No, but so I thought that was interesting, um, but it was cool to see that. We also did uh, Lucia's Vegan Lifestyle. And so oh. she runs, I think, the only like broadcasted vegan TV show. And so that was That's pretty wild. cool. Yeah. That one was that one was fun. She's really cool. Has a whole she does more of like a I guess like lifestyle, you know, like different brands mm -hmm. and stuff more than food. And so I think that's a cool aspect that people forget about too. So that one was cool. I did one that wasn't vegan, but it was at Green Spark. It was their COO, I think. They it's kind of like to help a business familiar. become more like eco-friendly. It's like an eco-friendly okay. one. And so that interview was cool. I think that was my first interview. And that one's like not even on video. So that one was fun. But yeah, so just a lot, just hearing from different people from different countries and different cultures talking about it is pretty cool. Yeah, and so yeah, totally. So it's been fun so far. I don't like public speaking, but it's been fun having conversations with different vegans. Like, you know, you learn more about them and you find more people. So like we've well, actually kept in touch, you know. Yeah, I love the guests that you meet that you like keep in touch and you chat with mm -hmm. or there's like a few people I've like texted and yeah. just, you know, it's so funny how that happens. But I got to ask if you don't like public speaking, why did you start a podcast? <laughs> you know, maybe part of it was to get through that. Got uh, it. Got it. Like shock yeah. therapy. Yeah, you know, and I don't think I really intended a whole lot of interviews either from the beginning. It was supposed to be like me and my friend talking about it, maybe. And it's easier like when this is only, I think, the second one on video that I've done by myself because my partner used to be here. And so like with a partner, it's easier because you could bounce off or like, well, they're talking. You can think totally. of a question. Um, so, yeah, that's easier with the group. But, you know, maybe to just shock it out. Also, I think I like talking <laughs> in front of people I'm comfortable with. So I guess just getting the thoughts out. You know, I wanted to do something vegan rather yeah. than just be vegan. And so I kind of planned all of this out during COVID, a very convenient time Same. to have a lot of a lot of time on your hands, you know. And so I mean, I planned it out ex extensively. And then, you know, last last year I was just like, you know, I actually have to do it. <laughs> I have oh, a real you really bad habit. did plan and like you, yeah. I I googled how do you start a podcast, and then was like, <laughs> I'll figure this out. Well, see, I planned everything out because I didn't have a whole lot. Then, so I was like, I want to have the podcast. I want to have the YouTube, this and this and this. And I want to kind of like work with these people. And I tried like fishing out who would be interested in doing stuff. And then it came to like 2022, you know, and I was like, are we really going to do this? I have a really bad habit of like, I love planning stuff. And then it comes to like taking those hard steps. I'm like, mm. so I was like, we're going to do this. And then I just bought everything and I'm kind of really bad financially. Like I like holding on to my money. I don't like spending my money. So I was yeah, like, if I, I buy that. it. If I buy it, I'm not going to want to waste it. So I just bought everything and I was like, well, now we got to use it. <laughs> Dude, I so, so relate to that. And I, I hope, you know, that question was not more of a like, well, then why did you start a podcast? Right. That's not how I meant it. I was just more like, oh, how, are you okay with this? Because you're. I think you sound like you enjoy yourself when you're interviewing people and, and you're doing a great job now. I know it must be weird. Yeah. I've only ever been by myself. So I'm like, -da 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 -da, right, you know, like... <laughs> I don't yeah. know, only child syndrome or something too, but I, it must be weird to now transition to being kind of a host. So I think you're going to do great yeah. though. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It is wild to, to talk to some people that 
end up as guests, especially sometimes it's like, you think you're going to talk about one thing and then Mm -hmm. they share. I don't know. It's just, it's so fun to connect with people. Like you said, like people who are vegan or people that care about the environment, but in all these different ways, like fashion and, you know, all these different things. It's so fun. Right. And I think it's good as a podcast because everybody hears, you know, the normal vegan stuff over and over again. So it's kind of cool if you grab some like intriguing views on it or ways people go about it. So that was fun. Pretty much. Do you have any, since you're a planner, do you have any Uh big plans or advancements that you can tease at? Or are you trying to kind of get stable? I know you said the blog's coming back and the YouTube channel probably. Yes. Hopefully YouTube channel. Like I mentioned earlier, I really want to get into like kind of like a products kind of division type thing. And so I do have, I guess, my jar of trash like years before. No, but it's just (laughs) plastic. So I have bottle caps, kind of like the thin plastic people like they put in the packages and package things in. And, you know, I'm looking at ways to turn those into beads and make bracelets, necklaces, stuff like that. Um, You know, cheap, just kind of, you know, with the eco side of things, eco-friendly instead of vegan. So that should be fun. I love that. Okay. I yeah. I have an account. I have if I don't do it, remind me mm-hmm. that I have to send you on Instagram. There is a woman I've been following forever, and she makes beautiful jewelry out of plastic uh-huh. she finds at the beach. Yeah, I mean it's very good because like plastic does not get recycled, mm-hmm. and I don't think people realize that because everyone throws in recycling or whatever. But it's like aluminum gets recycled a lot, almost all of it, but plastic is very small yep. amount of it. So. Yeah. So, I mean, if it worked out, obviously I'd try to do things like that, like other things that have to source more, but it's fun to even just, even if it just offsets my plastic impact, selling it would still right. be very good. You must have a Beyond business the, mind. Are you business yes, minded? Like you, is that what you're, were you a business major? <laughs> you're giving business am, major vibes. I'm just finishing my business major. Yeah. yeah next, there it is. next spring. Yep. <laughs> good for you. That's awesome. I mean, that is a compliment because you are so yeah. organized with your plans i think it's mm-hmm. incredible and it it like shows in your work when you go to your website i'm like damn this is professional <laughs> thank you yeah. yeah so i think beyond that just kind of like big out there ideas that i need to you know make some money before i got into that um beyond that i did change one of my pages to like a resource hub that i'm gonna put out with this guide like different i would want to get more resources going which would be fun so yeah i think products is the next big thing coming out so that should be on the on the lookout. I love that. Well, stay tuned, everybody, for that. <laughs> yes. Hopefully they go good. Do you have anything that you want to share with your listeners, my listeners, since we're doing this episode together that I haven't given you space for that you're like, this thing? Well, I guess an important one would, in the guide for finding other vegans, which is another important section mm. that you wrote, I think. you you put to that you could even like a Facebook group or your Patreon. So I thought maybe you'd want to explain kind of like what goes on in your Patreon and why that would be helpful for them. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. I think the one thing I've been lucky to have is my best friend growing up went vegan when we were in like middle school, obviously didn't listen very closely Mm -hmm. to her for a very long time. But when I went vegan, I was like, got my person. And that's not necessarily normal. Uh And I started hearing and talking to other people that were just like, oh yeah, I just, no one in my life will talk to me about this or whatever. And it's just so important. I realized to have a space where you can explore these things and ask questions and not feel stupid and just have other people that like get it, that you're like, how annoying is it to only get fries and a side salad? You know, like you can relate to someone about this. So Mm -hmm. I think finding community, finding Facebook, finding some friends, or for example, of course, I'm going to plug myself here is mm-hmm. patreon.com slash consciously Carly is a, another form of community there where I have like monthly live calls to teach us things about conscious living. Last month I had a call and we, with a vegan cookbook author and we cooked a meal together mm-hmm. And just stuff like that, where it's like, you can come, you can ask me questions. There's weekly content, depending on what level you're at. There's monthly Uh content. There's, there's a lot there. So if you're looking for that, please reach out or check it out. Cause I really love, I really love the idea of having like this, this more insular community, not to like keep it (laughs) exclusive, but 
partly a little bit, you know, like to like, this is where we get more and more. Right. It's fun. What's probably your favorite thing you post on your Patreon? Like what's the funnest thing you did that you got to post there? Hmm. That's a great question, Connor. This is going to, people that are listening, if they were patrons in the very beginning in 2020, throwback, oh. I've, I've gotten to do a lot of cool things that I appreciate getting to share with that community. But during the pandemic, I started doing what I eat in a day videos, mm -hmm. like every week I would post one to Patreon and it was keeping me accountable for eating better during the pandemic it was a really fun way to share, like, what am I actually eating? That was a lot of questions that I would get. I haven't done one right. in a while, but I actually really enjoyed doing them. So now that you're asking uh -huh. me that, maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do a throwback and do a couple of those again. Cause then it's like, you get to explain a little bit more and share why, instead of just like a quick Instagram. Right. You know, it is fun. Mm -hmm. um, so for your lowest, the lowest tier, uh, how much does that cost? $2 a month. Okay. And what, what do you get on the lowest tier? So for $2 a month, you get a weekly tarot card pull. So for my woo woo folks out there that like the, <laughs> that like that a little bit, I just like to start every Monday with like a message that we can all think about. That's kind of that mindfulness piece, right? Like, uh -huh. all right, let's think of like a message to guide us for the week. How, what does that mean to me? Just take a moment to pause. And then you get discount codes, early access to all the stuff I do at that tier. Okay. And then it goes up from there. Sounds like a good offering. Thanks. I agree. And then, so just for my viewers, what, what else do you do with conscious Carly? Sure. Yeah. I guess I am so used to interviewing. I'm really bad at getting <laughs> interviewed. So I'm sorry. I mean, kind of... You know, it's a dual interview too. It's not normal, you know? Yeah, I know. I'm just like, let me ask you questions. La, la, la. Yeah. So Consciously Carly is my business and it houses the podcast Consciously Clueless. I obviously love a good alliteration <laughs> and I am a conscious living coach. So that means I help people with the three kind of pillars I've identified of conscious living, mindfulness, sustainability, and veganism or plant-based living. And I can help with one piece of that or all the pieces of that, depending on what people are interested in. I'm a yoga instructor. I teach classes locally okay. and do, I have a, a get more mindful bundle, a resource okay. that if you're like mindfulness and meditation, yoga, that sounds scary kind of <laughs> intro on my website. So yeah, I really just kind of with you in terms of the mission driven, I just want to keep showing people that the way we take care of ourselves can be a way to also take care of the world and take care of each other. And those two things don't have to be in opposition. Right. So yeah, just doing all that I can, working on some new fun projects and just trying to make that grow as much as I can. You know, it sounds fun because it's also, you're one of the few that I've seen that's like, you know, from the conscious side of it, at least that advertises it that way. And I guess just to bounce the same question off you, do you have mm -hmm. anything big that you have coming forward or that you would like to foreshadow? Well, yeah, actually, since we're doing a quick turnaround on this episode, I'm so used to trying <laughs> to like think far out. I'm like, what will uh, be happening in a couple of months? <laughs> but I'm hosting a free masterclass on mm -hmm. September 28th called What's Mindfulness Got to Do With It? So actually kind of mm -hmm hearkening to all of that, like sustainability, veganism, why are you talking about mindfulness? I'm going <laughs> to explain that and bring okay. us through a practice, teach you about why it matters and show you how to bring some more mindfulness into your life. That's free. It's on my website. And Instagram is probably the best way to uh -huh. keep in touch consciously, Carly, with everything going on. Uh -huh. um, and then a new series on the podcast called Consciously Cannabis will be oh, launching soon. <laughs> yep, because we're legal in Minnesota. Yeah, Ooh. folks in California, you're like, welcome to the world. So yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah, excited should... about looking at that through the lens <laughs> of conscious living. Yeah, no, that sounds like it fits right in. Mm -hmm, I would agree. <laughs> we'll make sure to put that somewhere in the description or maybe the end of the video, you know, make it easy to get there. That sounds great. I appreciate yes. that. I, I really love everything you're doing. I, I think you're a, a great human. Thank you. You as well.
If you're hearing this message, you've listened to the entire episode of Consciously Clueless. And for that, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this new episode. And if you did, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or tag me and share in social media. Share this episode with others who may be interested in this topic. To get more resources, influence on topics covered, and bonus content, join the Consciously Clueless community over on Patreon at patreon.com slash consciouslycarly. And don't forget, if you need help living more consciously, let's work together. Email me today. See you next Wednesday for a new episode. This podcast is supported by all the brands that I love and that I get to work with. Considering how much I talk about the fact that we should be buying less, you know if I'm promoting a brand, it means I use it myself and I love it. Sometimes the stars align and I score discount codes for the brands that I love. If you go to consciouslycarly.com slash shop, you'll find discount codes for brands like Parade that sell sustainable underwear, Terra Seed that is vegan vitamins, Joy selling sustainable plant-based milk alternatives, Plain products that shows a new way to provide the world a shampoo, conditioner, body wash, and more by using returnable, recyclable containers. There is so much on that page of all the brands that support this podcast and support the work I do. So don't forget to go to consciouslycarly.com shop to check all of that out. Mm-hmm.